Hey gang, Will here at the Aspen Fly Shop with our updated fishing report for the third week of August. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We are just going to focus on the Rogue with a couple other points about, uh, you know, some different closures and stuff uh, that we're seeing in the area just to keep you up to date. Appreciate you tuning in so much. Away we go. All right, so we're going to talk about the Rogue, the little little oasis of steelhead fishing happening with uh, lots of uh, lots of controversy and low counts and just lots of stuff all around us. It was really really hard to watch, but uh, but the Rogue is um, hanging in there. It's doing well. That's why we got to really pay attention to it. So um yeah it's like i talk about a lot in here it just has some kind of unique things about it that help keep the water temps uh, uh pretty good in the upper river and um and um and yeah we've we've got some fish around so we have about 800 900 fish into the hatchery and the recent sand counts are looking pretty good so um yeah we're looking at that some fish being around also the feedback that we're getting from uh from our customers out there where people are getting into a few fish here and there. So um, yeah, it's a good time. August typically is uh, when we see, you know, kind of pods of fish coming in, spreading out a little bit. So it can be kind of good. It seemed like a good bite and then it'll kind of trail off. Um, but as we get more into September and, and temps cool more and stuff and uh, lower river temps cool and really uh, give those fish a chance to advance up into the upper river, then, then we start to see it, you know, accumulate a bit and, and, uh, and get a little bit better. So that's, that's where we're at. It's a great time to be fishing. Uh, mornings, I still, uh, that's really the best time to be out there if you're looking for a steelhead. It's a wonderful time to fish a dry fly or a little traditional pattern, uh, just subsurface. Um, it's a great time to be fishing that way on the Rogue. These fish are gonna move move to flies right now. Um, and uh, so sections of the river, you know, we're up here toward the top in the Medford area, you know, up to the dam and that Shady Cove section. So most of that stretch is good. We are seeing temps still hit that kind of 65 degree range, you know, in the middle of the day around Gold Ray, but that's great. That's better than it's been. So the smoke actually kind of keeps the water temps down. Uh, we have had some overcast. So any day you can get out like that, if you can bear it for a couple hours in the smoke, that's that's a pretty good, uh, pretty pretty good way to go. You know, it's going to keep temps down. Once we get down below Grants, once we get down below Rogue River, or not Rogue River, excuse me, Gold Ray Dam down there, you really got to watch those afternoon temps. Um, you know, they're definitely going to they're definitely going to kick up a bit. So you really want to be fishing in the early part of the day, unless you're upstream of like Dodge Bridge or Tuvel Park, then you're pretty much good for uh, for most of the day. Um, you know, with those temps staying in that comfortable range for fish of that upper upper end, about 65 degrees or so. So, so that is uh, that whole section is 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 good, and we should be looking for fish out there. Um, again, as I was talking about swinging flies, if you are, it's game for everything. Uh, now is a great time of year to fish scandy heads um, and fish smaller bugs, traditional flies, skate your dry flies. Again, if you're nymphing out there, uh, it's all the same. We talk about all the time, hothead stones, more natural looking stonefly, um, uh, stonefly nymphs, red copper johns, you know, smallish pheasant tails, 12s, 10s, even 14s uh, can work. So real mix of stuff for nymphs uh, works good and that stuff's just gonna work, work good forever uh, uh, on the rogue fish. So. Um, flows are actually pretty good. What, what did we say they were letting out? Like 15? God, so 1,500 out of the dam is, is fantastic. So we've talked about in here too, you know, they do hold water in Lost Creek Dam for the fish or Lost Creek Lake. So they're, they're letting it out now, letting, letting a bit out, hopefully trying to bring those water temps down and, and pull fish in. Just also keep the water temps down generally in the river. Um, so really happy to see that much water coming out. When we get into September, we will see the flows start to kind of cascade down a bit. They pull the water down and I'm sure it's going to be very, very low. So once we get to second, third week of September, um, you can expect to see those water, water, uh, 
um, flows down quite quite low and that 800 CFS range will be my guess once we hit hit rock bottom so so great that's what we're seeing on the rogue and moving on So a couple uh, notable uh, closures um, in our region that are important to know about and some stuff that's just been uh, enacted. So North Umpqua, you probably know, has been closed, but you know if you're just seeing this for the first time, that the North Umpqua is closed at this time. Um, there's a big fire that's been uh, burning up there uh, for the past several weeks, and pretty sure that's mainly why it's closed, is to keep that highway clear of people that are running up and down trying to work that fire. Um, also combined with low fish counts, warm water this year, low water. Um, so they, uh, um, uh, Fish and Wildlife just decided to close it, which was a good call. I think the angling community is, is behind them on that. But um, North Umpqua steelheading is off the table for the, uh, for the foreseeable future. That'll probably shift as we get uh, into some cooler temps and we see those fires get knocked down there a bit. Uh, Northern California, they did decide to close a lot of the uh, national forest areas um, in the northern part of the state um, through September 6th, so through Labor Day. So it's really only a couple of weeks, a few weeks, a uh, couple weeks, uh, just to kind of keep the amount of people running around in there down. You know, this is the last part of the summer and, and um, when uh, the, these areas are most susceptible to fire. So just trying to keep keep the pressure down um, and uh, but once we get through that uh, September 6th we will see that stuff should see that stuff reopen and get back to fishing that'll affect a lot of the stuff we do in Northern California of course the rivers aren't closed necessarily but a lot of the roads getting to them uh, will be so so let's give it a break and then uh, get back to our favorite time of year you know once we get past that first part of September and things cool off it's just so wonderful in all those areas and it's a lot safer to be out there so um, that's uh, what's going on in some of these areas up here. Thanks so much for tuning in everyone. We really appreciate it. Of course, if you have any more uh, questions, please feel free to give us a call. We'll, we'll provide uh, as much up to the minute detail as we can on, on these areas, fisheries and stuff. We really appreciate you tuning in uh, today and uh, good luck to you out there and we'll talk to you soon.